Welcome back to the third part of the program. This is where we tell you what's happening now across the Federation, and that's news across Nigeria. Let's take a look at Nasarawa State now, where the governor, Tanko Almakura, has signed a 158 million Nara intervention fund commitment with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, to improve immunization exercises in the state. And in a related development, the governor also received officials of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, who are there on an advocacy campaign. First to meet with Governor Tanko Almakura is a team from UNICEF. They are here to sign the UNICEF work plan. A representative of the body tells the gathering the rationale behind the commitment. He says UNICEF has donated the funds to the state government and expects it to pay its counterpart fund of 50% to kickstart the work plan. For the 2016, the resources that I see for, for Nasarawa, it's about 158 million Naira. And that 158 million Naira is primarily on three sectors. Uh, that's the health, and health includes nutrition and immunization. We also want to work a little bit on water and sanitation and on behavior changes. Governor Almakura assures that the state is fully committed to actualizing the visions of UNICEF. Areas that we consider of particular interest uh, is that of immunization. Uh, we will appreciate if all the vaccines and uh, all the necessary uh, inputs uh, to, to, to ward off any uh, out outbreak or any ailments. The governor then goes into another meeting with officials of UNESCO who are seeking support for the sustainability of the state agency for adult and non-formal education. We we'll never play with the education of its own world. So we believe that as Fubel is being given attention, state agency for mass education is supposed to be even given greater attention. If parents are educated, I don't think they will play with the education of their own children. Here, the governor pledges to grant their request. I'm going to give my total support to our agency, not only at the state level, but when we come uh, for a meeting during uh, uh, Economic Council of Council of States to make a case mm -hmm. that mass person should be given this, this, this opportunity. To continue to promote economic empowerment and sustainable development in states, governments at all levels have been asked to take proactive measures to increase literacy rates amongst citizens to help them as individuals tackle the current socio-economic challenges in the country. From development in Nasarawa State to Adamawa State, where the Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase, has appealed to the Adamawa State government to assist in the reconstruction of the Jimeta Division of the Nigeria Police Station in Yobe, destroyed by a bomb blast during the insurgency. The police boss, represented by the State Commissioner of Police, made the appeal at the commissioning of 64 units of two-bedroom apartments built for police personnel in the state. He says the accommodation is for serving policemen and other members of the community. That this is the first phase of 100 semi-detached bungalows of which 64 houses have been fully completed. The second stage of construction will commence as soon as funds are made available for such purposes from the mortgage bank. This is housing estate. It's not a police barracks, rather it is an estate that equally caters for the civil population. I wish to seize this opportunity to appeal to the state governor I mean to the state government of Adamawa State for the reconstruction of and renovation of one-story building recently destroyed by the unfortunate bomb explosion in the exclusive I mean, in the explosive ordnance 
disposal, which is EOD stored in Jamaica. And now we'll turn our attention to Kogi State now, where the governor, Yahaya Bello, has issued a warning to contractors to perform the obligations or be disengaged. The governor said his administration will probe the contracts awarded by the past government with the aim of recovering public funds spent on such projects. He was speaking at a meeting with some contractors handling some projects. Contractors handling projects in Kogi State all seated in the glass hall of the government house in Lokoja. The meeting is designed to unravel why contractors abandon projects at will. Reeling out the statistics of projects is the Commissioner for Works and Housing, Jimo Abdullahab. The first project on the list uh, is Idio Road, Ogale Road. The total kilometer of the road is 13 kilometers. It's being handled by Kifi, Kifi Global Services. The contract was awarded in September 2010, Your Excellency, sir. The total contract sum here is 464 million euros. Amount paid so far is 325 million euros, sir. Work done to date is 27%. It left the contractor, amount with the contractor is 20 million euros, Your Excellency, sir. One after the other. The contractors stand to give reasons for the abandonment and some of the challenges they have been through. Of the 12.8 kilometers road that uh, was awarded, we have completed the concrete works. When we started that uh, project, there was no link between the four or five villages uh, um, areas, and we have linked them as of today. We are still at the site, and we are interested in continuing the project. The challenges we are having will be giving the reports to the design age. We are also planning together on how to execute the project. One of the contractors expresses displeasure at the findings. We have a duration of 260 million that is before the government that is yet to be attended to. And if I have this money in the bank, I've submitted it as far as December last year. Let's look at the interest rates. Nobody is talking to us about that. Then the governor lends his voice. Mobilize and go back to work. We will try as much as possible to provide you with security. We are doing a lot on securing the state. But don't hide under that, that uh, guys and then leave the project. It's two years on now. The overall goal is to activate the abandoned projects around the state and also help bring accountability in its delivery. And now we turn our attention to the education sector in the southwest. The non-academic staff of the Obatemiawolowo University, Leife, in Ocean State, have rejected the selection of Professor Ayobami, Ayobami Salami as the new vice chancellor of the institution. There had been several protests by the union comprising Sanu and Nasu members against the outgoing vice chancellor, Professor Bamintale Omoli, who they accuse of imposition and financial impropriety, and the announcement of the former deputy vice chancellor, Professor Salami, as his successor, has fueled the agitation of the workers. When we were still in court, the the our own lawyer, the lawyer for the for Sanu and Nasu, challenged the illegality on the part of the administration of this university and the governing council in holding the interview that was stopped by the court of law. That is Federal High Court Osogbo. They've announced Professor Ayoba Misalami as the new VC. We want to tell Nigerians that it was illegal because that's the, that's the, and I'm confessing the position of the court of law. Because if you want to be serious about fighting against corruption, moment a whistle is blow by any Nigerian, there's need for art grass agencies to come and inspect. They can do preliminary investigation before they go into the primary aspect of it. And that brings this edition of News Across Nigeria to a conclusion. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alumide McCoy.